Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name's Anne Logan, this is Smokey, and you're watching the I've Read This .com YouTube channel. Um, I'm of course wearing my house coat today. It is Sunday morning, and uh, people that know me personally will recognize me in my house coat because this is my uniform. It's what I typically wear <laughs> uh, for the majority of the day. But um, I know I promised you that I'd be in my house coat for at least one or two of these videos because that's just the most realistic thing. So here I am. Um, my husband let me sleep in tonight, which was so nice. And here's Smokey in her morning attire. <laughs> Um, okay, so today's December 9th. Let's check out what's in my chocolate advent calendar first. Here's number nine. Ah, another chocolate square. There's been like, I think I've gotten like four or five in a row of these. They're kind of hard to get out. Whoa, Jesus, I flew. Here we go. Um, again, I love the chocolate. It's not gross or anything, but it's just kind of like boring. Hey, Smokey. I think it's kind of boring. She's like, she likes to be on my lap right now. She, I think she likes the house coat. It smells like me. Okay, so today's story, number nine. It was called Someone Steps In by Suzanne Rivka. And according to the bio, she has one book and she's been, um, she, it won a prize and it's, you know, she's been nominated for a bunch of things. She lives in San Francisco. Um, I should mention that on the Hankston and Olson website, you can um, go on the day that the story is released and look up more information about the author and they have like links and an interview and stuff. Sometimes I do that before I film these videos, sometimes I don't if I want to learn more about the author or what the story is about. Um, because I kind of like reading the story and you know talking about it here to you guys without that extra information first like to form my own opinions and then look at it afterwards when I'm like uploading this video. So just an FYI, if you're interested in following along that way. Um, and also according to the bio, this story uh, is copyright 2018, but it's previously appeared somewhere else. So you could Google it, maybe find it online somewhere. I know a lot of people told me that they've done that uh, last year and they could find other stories. So maybe check that out if you're interested. So uh, today's story, starts off with um, the author speaking a collective we. So um, she'd say, you know, we grew up poor, we grew up rich, we grew up in a huge house, we grew up in a shack, we grew up homeless. And she, you know, she's constantly contradicting herself so it becomes clear that she's talking about a huge group of people. Um, and then as the pages progress, she kind of continues to whittle that down. So then it becomes clear that she's talking about just women. And you know, she starts from childhood and moves up to like being a teenager. And then, you know, in the last few pages, she is referring to women exclusively who struggle with eating disorders. Um, and that can be any kind of eating disorder. Um, and I'm sure lots of people will come to the same conclusion as me as they read the story, but I believe she's just making a statement about the fact that uh, people who suffer from eating disorders, women, um, come from all sorts of backgrounds, they have all sorts of childhoods, they have helpful parents, horrible parents, they're hit, they weren't hit, um, and you know, just the fact that eating disorders can affect anyone, regardless of who they are, um, where they came from, and um, it is an addiction and a disease, and instead of seeing it as someone bringing it on to themselves or only thinking a certain way, we need to start looking at it as something that affects people just like, you know, mental illness or cancer. It just happens to some people and we don't know why. Um, I really, I mean, you can't really say that you enjoy a story like this necessarily, but I really liked reading it. It's very well written. Um, it was very engaging and absorbing and, you know, not festive at all. <laughs> um, but I think it, it's really quite um, important that it was included in a holiday advent calendar like this because you know, as we know, the holidays in most cultures center around food and they center around eating. All holiday celebrations involve like a huge aspect of them are food and the food that we eat. And you know, especially just getting together with family. You know, you're sitting at a table and there's a bunch of food on your plate and everyone is looking at everyone else's plate. What are you eating? Especially, you know, the host and hostess. I noticed that when I'm at someone's house, and 
I don't take a little bit of every single dish that's been prepared, someone comments on it, right? And it might just be because maybe I didn't want that or I didn't like it or I'm not feeling it. But um, sometimes the person who's made that food can take it as a as a slight or a snub. And you know, you kind of have to explain why you're not eating that or whatever. Um, I find my generation's kind of getting better at that because so many of us have food intolerances and stuff, but it's something that always comes up around this time of year. And it, I imagine this is a really difficult time for people who struggle with eating disorders. So I think this is, story is a really nice reminder to be gentle with other people in your life who um, maybe don't view food the same way you do. And um, it's important to just be supportive of those people, um, regardless of where they come from or who they are or how they're related to you. So I really liked today's story. And I think it was very fitting for a holiday advent calendar. And um, yeah, I, I again, enjoy, enjoyed the variety of stories that we're getting in these calendars. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for joining Smokey. I may or may not be in a house coach tomorrow. It's Monday. We'll see how it goes. Um, I will speak with you then on December 10th. Bye.